Hello, welcome to my YouTube video. My name is Stuart Meacham. On this episode, I'm going to show you using Final Cut Express, uh, which is the same as Final Cut Pro, just a few missing features, how to key out a green screen. So you can go from this to this. The first thing I'm going to suggest is I was quite fortunate that I actually have a proper green screen which cost me around £60 on an auction site on the internet. It's two metres by roughly one and a half. Obviously if you don't have this green screen what you can use is a single coloured sheet um, or whatever that you have to hand. The first thing I will say is make sure that it's lit up and you're lit up quite comfortably that you have no drop shadows behind you as you can see I haven't around me. And the other thing is make sure there's no deep wrinkles or creases because in the keying out that's going to be quite difficult. As you can see I have a few, just a few around me, but to be honest what I'm going to probably do is crop anyway so you're not going to even see that. So what I'm going to do now is show you using Final Cut Express how to do that. Okay, so within Final Cut Express the first thing you want to do is import obviously your footage that you filmed against the green screen and a background image. It, it makes no difference if you're using a picture or a movie clip. For this exercise, I'm just gonna use a simple picture. First thing you wanna do is drop that on your bottom track. Then what you wanna do is get your green screen footage and just drop that above it. Now, as you can see uh, on the canvas, uh, there's a lot of area that practically is not going to be used within the footage. I always recommend that you play your captured green screen footage to make sure that your arm's not going to go above etc. Um, in this exercise pretty much I'm staying within where I am at the moment. So what you want to do is crop that and it's quite simple to do. We just double click on your green screen footage. Um, I'm just going to bring the cursor to roughly the middle. It, it doesn't matter whichever. We're simply going to then click up onto the sequence with viewer to motion and crop. And it's a simple case of dragging a slider to roughly where you want it all to be. Okay, the next step is we're gonna to want to um, make sure our cursor head is playing over both the background and the foreground track. Right, what we're gonna do now, again, double click onto filters, and we're gonna to wanna to add the chroma key. And to do that from the effects menu at the bar at the top, go to video filters, down to keys, to chroma key, and then click on visual. This is gonna give you all your controls for that. The first thing we wanna do is obviously choose the color. Um, whether it be green, blue or whatever, and a simpler way to do that is to select the color dropper, bring over onto your sequence canvas, and then just click. Now obviously you can see that's not probably all out. Um, what I tend to do is make sure, in this case because we're using a green screen, we're going to make sure that pretty much all the green within here is selected. The other thing to do on the saturation and luma is just to drag the sliders until pretty much you're happy. Pretty much what the, this represents is that's going to be from the very darkest of the green, that's going to be very up to the lightest, obviously, of this color selector. So just keep randomly moving them around until pretty much all the green has disappeared. Okay, as you can see, the background image is not to the full of the screen. So what we're going to do now is just double-click that, and we're just going to literally make it that slightly bit bigger. Okay, back to the, the key. As you can see, there's um, some green around me. There's one or two ways we can do this. You can try the edge thin and just bring it and just keep dragging it until you're happy. Now, what that tends to do is take the edge of the whole entire of yourself out and obviously you're gonna start cutting into obviously yourself on your image. The other way you can do it is on the saturation and luma is just keep adjusting it until at such point they've pretty much disappeared. Now I will say in Final Cut Express and the same as Final Cut Pro, you're never going to get this 100% perfect. Um, the program I normally use is called Shake. Unfortunately, it's not only very expensive, but I believe Apple have stopped developing it. And also it's going to take months and months and months of learning. Um, but in this case, if you're just using it for a home movie, this is pretty much acceptable. Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of green um, around me. Um, as I say, just keep adjusting or your saturation luma and color until pretty much it's disappeared into a point that you're pretty much happy with. You can see, okay, there's a little bit of green there, but I'm not too worried about that. So what we want to do now is just soften the edge. As you can see, it was a bit jagged. So we're just going to move that up again until you're happy. As you can see, um, all around me is pretty much all soft and the best I'm going to get it for this image. Okay, the other thing we can try and do, as you can see from the image there, my 
itself is a little bit too dark compared to the background image so what we're going to probably want to do is just add a filter um, simply called color correction which again is under effects video filters color correction and we're going to go down to color corrector and again we're going to click on visual um, pretty much the reason I'm going to use this is supposed to just the brightness and contrast what the brightness and contrast can tend to do is start fading out colors where in this um, you can pretty much just bring up the white slightly until obviously you're sort of matching the light of the background and then what I normally do is just bring the saturation up a bit to stop making me look so pale as you can see that's pretty much a good match so that's pretty much it and the only thing left to do now as you can see from the red bar that it's needing um, to be rendered is to render that and then check it through and adjust it where necessary okay uh, I hope you enjoyed this episode uh, what I will say is I'm not a professional I've not been professionally trained on any of these Apple products this is purely on my own experience and learning to use it for myself what I do suggest is if you have had professional advice from an Apple trained technician obviously follow their advice over mine um, if you're not sure you can always email me on the email coming up on the screen now or you can go to the Apple support forums which is www.apple.com forward slash support and then navigate your way through to the discussions forum.